What's up everyone? So today I want to talk about the Smolov Squat Program. Now this is one of the most brutal protocols that I have ever followed. But the good news is that it put 20 kilos on my squat and 20 kilos on my deadlift without even deadlifting. So I didn't deadlift for a month and I put 20 kilos on my deadlift. Now I'm not saying you're going to get the same results, but I am saying that there is value to this type of protocol. So today we're going to look into the pros, the cons, how I felt during this savage three weeks, and if you should potentially or not potentially do this program. So a bit of background information. I first did this program about four and a half to five years ago, so a pretty long time ago. And this was when I was just first starting lifting. And I heard about this program, the Smolov Squat Program. And I decided to do it. At the time, my one rep max in the squat was 105 kilos. Don't laugh, I know it's not very good, I'm just not a very good squatter. I'd also done 100 kilos for three reps before, so I decided to plug in my one rep max into this calculator as 110 kilos, which was maybe not a very good idea. All right, so I start this program, and just to give you a bit of background, it is squatting four days per week, so already, that is super high frequency, especially considering the volume that is being done. So day one is four sets of nine reps. Day two, five sets of seven. Day three, seven sets of five. And day four, 10 sets of three. Now you have to realize that because you're squatting four days per week, you're not doing every other day. Two of those days are actually back to back. And for some reason, the savage mofo who set this program up whatever a-hole this was, they put the seven sets of five and the 10 sets of three on back-to-back -back days. So the two heaviest days are actually right next to each other. Thanks, person, small off, whoever you are. So the four by nine starts at 70%, then it's 75, 80, and 85% respectively for the other weights. Now, this is tough. These are all pretty heavy weights and these should all be fairly close to failure. Doing a four by nine at 70%, is pretty tough. Same with all of these. Uh, 7 by 5 at 80%, pretty rough, and a 10 by 3 at 85%, that's also getting pretty close to limit weights. So a lot of these reps should be, you know, a pretty high RPE, a lot of these sets. And that's just the first week. So the second week, you add 5 to 10 kilos, depending on how strong you are. Now, for me, adding 5 kilos was a lot. If you're squatting 400 kilos, five kilos isn't very much. But for me, this was actually quite a bit at the time. So that second week, the last workout, I was squatting 10 sets of three with my three rep max. So every single set was basically all out. And the whole workout, I mean, it was more than an hour. It was probably an hour and a half just because everything was maximal. You know, everything was close to the limit. Everything was rest pause, you know, I'd do a rep, it would be super grindy, I'd stand there for 10 seconds just wanting to die, do another rep, and just everything was rest pause, everything was brutal. And then week three, I had to add, you know, even more weight. So I was doing legit 10 sets of three with my one rep max. 10 sets of three with my one rep max. And there were failed reps, there were failed sets, there were a bunch of sets where I only got two reps and I had to, you know, take the weight off, re-rack the bar, put the weight back on, and then try to get three reps again. And I think that workout took like two hours. And the gym staff were just like staring at me. They're like, what the hell is this white kid doing? And I honestly felt horrible this whole three weeks. Warming up was terrible. I would, you know, go into the gym, my legs would hurt, and I would warm up with just the bar and I could barely get down to depth. Like I could barely squat down with just the bar. And you know, my knees would ache, my hips, my lower back, everything would hurt. I would, you know, try to sleep at night and I would feel my pulse in my knees. I could feel my heartbeat uh, in my lower back, in my hips. I would walk around and my, my legs would be so tight that I couldn't even walk properly. And you know, I could feel my legs growing. I was super hungry. I was I was probably eating 
uh, anywhere from 3,500 to 4,000 calories, which was way more than before. Before I was probably like mid 2000s and I wasn't getting fat, but I was putting on tons of weight. My thighs started to chafe together uh, and I would get like chafe marks on my inner thighs just because my legs were growing so fast. And it was basically just trying to survive these four workouts per week. Uh, the days off, I was just incessantly hungry. So I would, you know, cook myself food, eat it, and then literally 10 minutes later, I would be hungry again. And I, mean, I just, basically some of the days were just me walking from kitchen to bedroom, eating, then going back to the kitchen. And it must have been over 4,000 calories uh, a lot of these days, just because I was probably eating... Uh, probably five or six hundred grams of rice before cooking. And the weirdest thing was that even though I was, you know, having signs of overreaching and I felt like just donkey dung and, you know, everything hurt and my sleep was affected, I was still adapting. I could see my legs getting bigger. I felt stronger. Once I had warmed up, my squat felt much more natural and smooth. And so, you know, even though it was really really hard actually it was effective and when i tested my max i tested it at 125 kilos so this was a 20 kilo increase and almost 20 percent in just three weeks however that wasn't the most amazing part the most amazing part for me was when i tested my deadlift afterwards so i hadn't been doing anything else i, I wasn't deadlifting during this squat program don't try to deadlift during this kind of thing. It's just too much work. Don't do anything else for lower body. Maybe some mobility work, but don't like, oh, I'm going to go do Bulgarian split squats. No, okay, please don't do that. So I hadn't deadlifted in about a month, and I decided to test, you know, see where I was because I felt, you know, my legs were stronger. Maybe I could at least equal my PR. So I start warming up. I do, you know, two sets of 10 with 60 kilos. Then I go right to 100 kilos and I do two sets of 10, and it felt really easy. Usually I had done two sets of five with 100 kilos when warming up, and I just decided to do 10 reps because it felt so easy. Then I moved to 120 kilos, and this was something where I had a PR of five reps. And again, I did two sets of 10, and it felt super easy. Usually at that point, I had went to 130 kilos because, you know, 120, 130, that just made sense. That was the jump that I had made before. But this case, I just went to 140 kilos. I went right there because I felt like 130 would just be an equally easy lift. And 140 kilos at the time was actually my two rep max. And I pulled it for five reps. So that was amazing. Just doing five reps with my two rep max. That came out of nowhere. And honestly, it still felt pretty easy. And at this point, I'm pretty astounded, pretty amazed. And I put my one rep max, 150 kilos, on the bar. And I pull it for three reps. So that was pretty astounding as well. Usually you PR by like one rep. But to get triple the number of reps was pretty amazing. So I put 160 kilos, which would be a 10 kilo PR, on the bar. And I pull it for a double. Then I put 165 and I pull it. I put 170 and I pulled that as well. Then I put 180 kilos on the bar and I failed. But the fact that I was even attempting 180 kilos when my one rep max from one month before was 150 was absolutely crazy to me. Then I dropped the weight and I did five sets of five with 140 kilos. So at the end of the day, I did six sets of five with my previous two rep max. And I had never experienced anything like that in terms of improvement. And even since then, this has told me that if you wanna get a better deadlift, squatting is gonna be a really, really good accessory movement, especially for someone like me. As you can see, my back is pretty strong and my weakness is gonna be quads, adductors, and just that squat movement pattern. So if I improve my squat, Almost always, my deadlift also goes up. Keep in mind, this might not be true for you based on your leverages, based on your strengths, but it is certainly possible to improve your deadlift without deadlifting. So try out that workout, uh, maybe be a little bit more conservative with the loading than I did, but it can certainly be effective for improving your size and strength. 
That is all for today. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Peace.